problem 7.5, we have a baseball being thrown from the top of a building 22 meters off the ground. Its speed is, is initially 12 meters per second and is thrown at an angle of 53.1 degrees above the horizontal. So we would like to find out some things about what happens when this ball hits the ground. First of all, we want to know how fast it's going to be going when it hits the ground. Part B, if you threw this at 53.1 degrees below the horizontal instead, what would its speed be when it hits the ground? And then C, if we take into account air resistance, which we're ignoring for A and B, which one of these two situations will cause it to hit the ground at a higher speed? <clears throat> so... For this, we can use the conservation of energy. So there's some total mechanical energy. <clears throat> Which is the kinetic, the potential, and then any work that's done is equal the final kinetic and potential energies. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, there's nothing doing any work in this problem uh, external to uh, the force of gravity, which is already taken into account by the potential energy. So no need to worry about that. So, we have one half mv initial squared plus the weight of the ball times its initial height is equal to, and so once we, if this is our zero point for measuring gravitational potential energy then when it hits here then there will be no potential energy left so this is also zero and so there will only be all of the potential energy will be transformed into kinetic energy so m v final squared we can see right away that we don't have to worry about how massive the ball is, which is good because we weren't told its mass. And so the final speed is the square root of one half times the initial speed squared plus the acceleration due to gravity times the initial height. <clears throat> the 22 meters. And so this works out to be 24, well, if I draw that like a 2, 24 meters per second. Now for part B, Notice that nowhere in here did we have to worry about what this angle was. So in fact, this is independent of, of the angle. It only depends on its initial speed and its initial height. So other than realizing this fact, we don't actually have to do anything else. So now the reason for this, if we imagine the two, the two situations that we could have, is that here, all of the changes in kinetic and potential energy between the beginning of the, the ball's trajectory and when it goes up and it starts coming back down, 
all of these changes net to zero because uh, the force of gravity is conservative. So the only thing that matters is what the initial height was and what the final height is and not what heights it goes to in between. So if we're neglecting any non-conservative forces like air resistance, it doesn't matter which way you throw the ball, it'll hit the ground at the same speed. However, if we do have air resistance, this is that's non-conservative, and so the path it takes does matter. And in this case, it's moving a shorter distance in case B. So that will have the higher speed. 